Opening a door seems pretty basic, but hold on. Did you know there's a literal right and wrong way to do it, depending on the situation? There's a few ways to determine the best method, but it's important to remember that different buildings will call for different strategies. So while we're learning these skills today, just remember to keep your thinking dynamic so we can apply it when it really matters. The first phase we'll encounter as we're approaching the door is what we're going to be calling the inspection phase. We're starting by looking at not only the door itself, but the area to either side of it so we can pick the best option available to us. For example, the width is important to consider. If there is a narrow entryway, then it limits not only our views into the room, but also the amount of people we can get into it at the same time. On the flip side, if it's too wide, then we'll find ourselves in a situation where we'll be exposing ourselves to too many angles within the room before we've even entered. Now, we're also going to need to consider the amount of wall space on either side of the door. In an ideal world, we'd always be able to cover against the wall before opening the door to maximize our concealment. However, there are situations where there isn't any wall space, like at the end of a hallway or if there are obstructions next to the door. This means you're then relying on a moving object for cover, and if the door gets opened all the way, things are going to escalate pretty quickly. Alright, let's look at the door itself now. In Airsoft, pretty much everything acts as cover in terms of stopping BBs, but if it's not a solid door and there are cracks between the boards or large holes, you got to be extra cautious as players can peek through these portholes to set up ambushes or even shoot through. We also need to figure out some other things like what direction the door swings, the condition of the actual handle, if it even works, are there signs of traps. We need to be taking in as much detail as we can during this approach so we can make a good decision during the next phase, the setup phase. Using all the information we've gained from the last step, we can now start to plan our next moves. So if there's enough wall space on either side of the door, then we've got a choice to make. Do we start from the side closest to the handle or the side furthest away? When we open a door from the side furthest away from the handle, a few things are going to happen. We have to put more of ourselves in front of the opening, so when the door opens, yes, we can instantly see inside, but that also means that we're no longer concealed. Now, the other issue is that as we extend our reach to get towards that handle, it's going to put us off balance. We suggest in scenarios where you've come from the far side that you do so confidently and quickly, maintaining solid footing along the way. Now, usually our recommendation for the safest way to open the door is going to be on the side closest to the handle. This is mainly because it's not forcing us to be exposed to the room once it's open. We can then get back to a position of cover and reassess the situation. Another bonus from the side is we can just use our corner shot system like this and no, 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 no forget that. But let's just uh, let's move on to the next phase. The final phase is the manipulation phase, and this is when we're actually reaching out to open up the door. Again, I'd like to stress if you have to do it from either the middle or the far side of the door that you make sure you're well balanced and you make your movements with purpose. If time isn't on your side, then you'll likely need to make a dynamic entry and just get into the room as quickly as possible. However, if the situation allows for it, then it can be quite preferable to take your time and open the door with a smooth motion. Kicking in a door will not only alert everyone in the area, but it could also lead to the door bouncing back and shutting itself again. Also, you want to make sure you're keeping your weapon pointed up when you reach for a handle, as this will not only stop you from flagging yourself, but also reduce the chance of your rifle or strap getting caught in the handle. Finally, once the door is open, we can take our time and start to use things like shadows and sound to guess where enemies are located in the room. So we've managed to get the door open, but how do we go through it and clear the room within? Well, that's going to take its own video to explain, so once that's out, there'll be a link to it right here if you're interested. Thank you for watching. Class is dismissed.